Hey guys, it's Norm from Tesla and I'm here at CES 2013 and it wouldn't be a CES event if we didn't talk to Bree from MakeUpBot Industries. How are you doing, Bree? Hey Norm, it's great to be here. This is our fourth year here and it's good to see you again. We see you all the time. This is a, I, I love seeing you here. It's an annual check-in, maybe more than one time a year. We, we stopped by the, <laughs> the cave uh, last year, but you have some announcements here. Uh, first of all, Will couldn't be here. He is our MakerBot expert. He's the one who tinkers everything. He's making his own baby. He has a baby coming. How did, you know, I think that's the ultimate MakerBot operator achievement, his replication. I approve. <laughs> I guess it is DNA <laughs> replication. But we're gonna, we'll get him all the details from what you guys have to announce. So last year when you guys announced the Replicator 2, you also mentioned that there would be something for people who wanted to tinker more with the MakerBot, and that's the 2X. So you actually have the 2X here, yep. and this is a return to ABS, a return to the heated build platform. Uh, what are the advantages of that over the PLA? There are no great advantages, honestly. But people love ABS. So we optimized the Replicator 2X for the Doc Browns, the MacGyvers, the test pilots, the people who want to get under the hood and like working on hot rods. If you're one of those people, you can get a maker by Replicator 2X, experiment. It's the X for experimental and you know, explore the future of ABS and dual extrusion. Dual extrusion is the thing that makes this primarily different yep. because we had dual extrusion, the, you know, the modification for the first replicator, but for the two, that's PLA single extruder, this is dual extruder, and is that improved from the first MakerBot? You know, with the MakerBot Replicator 2, which is optimized for PLA with one extruder, we really wanted to make the machine that was really just the best experience for people. PLA, once you get it dialed in, it just loves to stick to things, it's dimensionally stable, it, it is very low shrinkage, and so we made the Replicator 2 so that people could just make things. I'm a fan of low shrinkage. Yeah. You mentioned dialing, and that's something we had to do with the first replicator, you know, getting the build platform really level, tinkering with that. And with the 2X, you guys have now have enclosure, and the build platform, it's slightly different also? Yeah, so it's a cast platform, and then it's milled. So the tolerance is it's going to be a lot easier to level because it, it won't warp as much. So you, it'll be, it's a much more stable platform for people to, to experiment with. How is, going forward, how is MakerWare going to be improved? And what is the API thing you're announcing today? So, first of all, MakerWare, we're really proud of it. It's a huge step forward. It's a GUI for your MakerBot. Yeah. Huge step forward in 3D printing. We're really proud of it. We've got a bunch of major bug fixes that went out today. And when we start shipping these soon, you'll see a MakerBot, Make, uh, MakerWare 2.0, which will allow you to bring two models onto the build platform and choose which one is which color. So that's going to be really great. That's coming, that's when we start shipping those. Um, on Thingiverse, we've got a couple things that I'm really excited about. So you've probably seen that we've been, you know, really working on Thingiverse lately. We, we added the dashboard, we added the ability for you to follow people, and we added the ability to make collections. This is all because the fire hose is getting too big. You, it's really hard to see everything on Thingiverse now. There's just too many things. So we had to make it so that you could customize your experience and see the things you wanted from the people you wanted. So now we've taken that one step further, we've added an API so that developers can make really cool applications on top of the Thingiverse platform. They can pull in objects and designs, files from Thingiverse, and have their own front ends or their own modeling programs and just let you and, and import into their, your, their own modeler so you can tweak things, right? Yeah, import or export. So you could, you could, you could make an application and then it would just automatically go there and there's, there's a lot of really cool things to do with it. I gotta and imagine your relationship with Autodesk and their one, two, three CAD programs, that's all gonna funnel to one, one universe, right? Yeah, we, the stuff with Autodesk and I just love 123D Catch. That's probably my favorite design program, and except for the new customizer. So because we just launched the API, we had to build an app to show people like what you could do with it. And we built an application that takes, um, for those of you who are into it, the Open SCAD scripts, Open SCAD scripts, are, it's a programming language for making things. And we made it so that you could create, you can program objects and leave um, variables in there that the end user can, can change. So you can make a snowflake and you can choose how big it is by just changing the slider. You can choose how many, how many branches are off from the middle and how many branches are off from each branch and the angle of those branches. So it's really about customizing parametric objects. And you know, parametric objects 
are really cool, but most people don't know what they are or how they would even get into it. This makes it approachable for anybody to be a designer. And this is a real breakthrough thing because CAD is one of the big challenges of making things for your MakerBot because it's hard. We can make cubes, but we're not going to all make gear hearts. Right. Right. So this allows you, you know, there will probably be a customizer thing that will allow you to make gear hearts. So there, there's going to be so many things that, that show up as people start to make customizable, parametric, you know, things that are with the customizer. And, and, and that's a design language that kids and, and you know, more casual users are familiar with, with you know, video games and stuff like that, right? And what we're going to see is people are going to use it, they're going to get hooked, they're going to feel empowered, they're going to make things that are theirs, and next thing you know, more explosions of things are going to appear in the, in the world. I mean, it's my favorite thing every day to go to Thingiverse, and it's really hard now because there's just so many new things every day, but I, I, I try and see as many of them as I can and get inspired. It's really cool. I know you're super busy. I got one more question. Going on. forward, 2013, what are your goals for MakerBot, both on the software and the hardware side? Well, you know, our big vision is to empower people to be innovative, to fuel the next industrial revolution by putting the power of manufacturing in people's hands. We've always had challenges scaling. We literally, we were like, okay, we have a new model, we'll probably sell twice as many. And then we sell more than that. So, great problem to have. We've got a lot of scaling so that we can bring the lead time down. Right now it's six to eight weeks if you order a MakerBot, and we gotta bring that down. The other thing that I'm excited about is just making it easier. How do we get people so that they can go from zero to 60, go from an idea to making it, and not get derailed in that process? Well, we'll stay tuned to your blog for that, and you, know, you, you do a great job showing off the cool things that people have made with the MakerBot. Thank you so much, Bree. Hey. I ha have a great CES, 2X looks great. We want to show some coverage of that, and we can't wait to get our hands on one. Okay, thanks so much for stopping by. Good uh, to see you. Good to see you. We'll see you, but more from CS 2013. I'm Norm from Dust Sales. See you guys next time.